Hello. Hi, everybody. Um, ready to paint tonight. And I have my board set up. My uh, cutting board that in my last stream over here on YouTube, we did some repair and gessoing to, and I've added my sketch on here. We're all ready to start painting on it tonight. <sighs> and of course, as is always the case where things go wrong immediately, um, like one minute before I went live, I dropped my Apple Pencil. I used my iPad to watch chat, dropped it behind my desk, which is a desk that it's not going to be easy to get back there and get it, but <laughs> I mean, I guess I can get the clumsiness out of the way early and uh, maybe that's a good thing, but yeah. And also brand new thing that I'm trying, so I hope that everybody will let me know if something is going very wrong, is dual streaming tonight. So I'm for the first time on Twitch and I'm excited. And I'm also live on YouTube, where I've been showing up live about twice a week for not quite a year. And I hope everything will be looking all right there. And for some reason, no. For some reason, and I said it before, it's almost guaranteed that just adding more things to the mix is just going to make me break stuff. Jim! Hi Jim! You're at your maker space. <laughs> That's awesome. Hopefully you're making some really cool stuff or experimenting with some really cool stuff. Okay, I'm going to be working with... Um, what's happening? Why am I breaking things? Okay, I'm going to be working with acrylic paint tonight. Um, and that being the case, I do think that maybe next time I will perhaps work with a uh, watercolor game. It's just been a while. And I might adjust the camera a wee bit so that maybe you can see my palette here. So bear with me here a second. Oh, I just adjust it a little bit down. Well, you'll see at least part of it. Um, this is a pad of palette paper that is uh, 60 years old, but we're not wasting things. So I'm still using it. It's a little brittle, but it does the job. I like that it has a thumb hole. Okay, I'm gonna put my paint. All right. So I tried to adjust everything so that you can see the sketch that I've put on here. It's a very simple sketch of kind of a basis of what I'm gonna start painting. And I'm just gonna start building a little bit of a basic palette to get started. And, ooh, cider tonight. Yeah, I've just got my tea. I got my cinnamon tea. It's a little too hot to drink. Where's my white paint? Oh. Nope, not white. Okay, there it is. And uh, believe it or not, I actually attempted to organize my studio a little bit again tonight. Just, it's like the organizational system that exists here is not the problem. It's just me keeping up with it. And there's bad, there's like so many paintings all over around the floor that I'm tripping over. It's very small space. There's not a lot of floor space when you start adding in things to trip over. Um, probably need more white than that, but we'll start there. And it's, uh, why do I have two of these? I don't know. Um, yeah, so I picked up and organized a few of the paintings found where my glass palette was that I thought I'd last or lost. I just, you know, you put things someplace where you think it's, oh, it makes sense to put it here. It's not where it belongs, but I'm sure I'll remember. Absolutely not. Do not remember those things. Okay. So I'm going to go very basic to start. I have quinacridone red. For some reason, I have two almost full tubes of this. I don't know how that happened. And uh, white, yellow ochre, and where is it? I just had it in my hand. Payne's gray. So that's just going to get me started and start blocking in some colors and different uh, basic areas that will over time get developed more. Uh, probably after tonight's painting session, I will go dig through my piles of um, random 
ephemera that I've collected, I guess you'd call it, bits cut out from old, super old magazines that I've been just kind of curating over time to use and decide if I have things that I want to incorporate into this and because I have some ideas about what this piece is going to be. And now that I'm working with something with handles, all right, first of all, this painting is like almost 20 pounds because it's on like an almost two inch cutting board. Here, you see kind of how thick that is, how heavy it is. It's very heavy. But I kind of dig the idea of <laughs> artwork with handles. Maybe it can be like uh, having, you know, when, especially chicks, you know, you get a pair of pants that has real functional pockets and you get really excited about it. It's kind of like that. Artwork with handles might be the new that. And there still isn't enough, um, still aren't enough pockets in the world. Hi, Watson. There's my cat. And he's very uh, active tonight and very curious and bored. And I had to put my keyboard out of the way because he keeps walking across it and you just never know what's going to happen when he starts doing that. Um, also, before I get much further with this, I'm going to add some acrylic medium retarder gel onto my palette. Something I really like to work with. It just makes the process a little nicer, easier, buys you a little more time to work with the paint as it's on the canvas. I really like this. I've tried a few different ones. It's the Utrecht Acrylic Medium Retarder Gel, and this is my favorite medium for that, for working with acrylics. Of course, always depending on what you want to achieve, but... Oh, Aaron said hello! <laughs> I'm live. I haven't muted myself yet. <laughs> still can't believe it. I still can't believe I did that, and I don't think that I understood my last stream when I muted myself. I didn't realize, when I finally realized what had happened, how long I had been muted for. That it was like 20 minutes, and that's like... That's really bad, you know? Uh, not a good thing. Ay, ay, ay. But, you know. Silliness. It's fine. Like I said, more things to control, more things to break. And uh, based on the email that you sent me, or sent, I have, I am uh, dual streaming tonight. For the first time, I don't know how it will go, but we are doing that. Um, and yeah, just kind of like a compare. I hope I've never, I've watched Twitch streams. I've not particularly like I've not done it before I looked into it at one point all right I'm gonna try to adjust the lighting as I go so that I can be sure that um we're not getting too what do you call it too washed out but just to start we're just gonna lay in some kind of block areas of color I'm using a number six filbert at the moment And because of the medium that I'm using, it's all about how much of it you mix in. But right at the moment, we've got a little bit of a kind of a almost transparent effect happening when I'm laying down my colors, so that's fine. I'm just getting things in their places. I actually, shockingly, uh, oh, here. We got to up the muting. Yeah, 20 minutes was unbelievable. <laughs> My Twitch is Linnell down slash Ingram. At least I'm fairly certain. <laughs> yes, um, if you find me there, let me know. I am kind of keeping an eye on both streams as they're happening um and it's interesting because the lag on each is a little bit different i don't think you can get completely away from 
having some lag, but it's just, uh, it's an interesting experiment and uh, I hope that this works and I don't know, we'll see where the future takes us. Right now, it just looks like I'm painting a lady with a beard, but I promise you that is not the situation. Yeah, for anybody who hasn't been on my streams before, I'm gonna grab a painting to say like, hey, this is what I do, but move things, hold on. Because I actually put some things away. This is the last painting that I finished uh, during stream. So uh, just to give an idea of the type of work I do, although I oftentimes incorporate also um, collage into my paintings as well. It just depends on the piece and where it goes, what I'm trying to achieve, and how it works out in the end. So I'm also looking at my reference I have on my screen. I have uh, blocked it out, but I also have, uh, have it up. And I'm gonna let my... Um, I'm going to allow it to go a little crazy in my contrasts and things to start with. Hello! Sorry for bothering you. I want to offer promotion of your channel. Hmm. No, I'm good. Thank you. I don't... Okay, I'm going to admit that I don't know how to do things yet with a chat on, uh, on what do you call it, on, on, uh, Twitch here. I'm not sure how to, <laughs> hello, Ruger's Scarlet, hello, um, yeah, the whole Twitch situation for adjusting chat and things like that is super, a little bit intimidating, because I don't know how any of it, I don't really know how it works well, um, I've only very casually been ever on it and using it so it's all new to me and I will have to figure out how to do the yeah that's pretty much it that's what exactly what I figured I'm just kind of gonna let it gonna just let it be and um start there and figure out things as they come up I guess because I am so technically minded. I mean, I can, I can be, it just depends on the thing. I have to know to learn the thing, right? And yeah, I kind of work. I'll be the first to admit I work a little bit weird and backwards. My ways of getting things going and done. But generally, ultimately ends up working for me, so this is okay. I do like painting on board. It's, uh, it's really smooth, and I didn't even, um, sand. Like, I put really heavy layer of gesso on here. Um, after I repaired it, And then all I did was give it a little bit of a polish after it had plenty of time to dry. So I didn't exact, like I didn't sand it to a super, uh, there's like some texture of the palette knife, but yeah, yes. Go back to YouTube, okay. <laughs> I'm just happy things work. I didn't break the whole universe yet. It's only a matter of time. The breaking will become out of control and go far beyond the studio walls. It can only be so far contained. So yeah, kind of to start, I'm just using kind of a bigger brush, locking in spots. 
walking in areas of light, dark, and such. One thing that uh, palette paper, at least that you would buy nowadays, doesn't do that this one is doing is it's actually kind of buckling. I don't know if you could see but uh, not real well, but the paper is like rippling with the moisture of the of the paint and that's rather kind of annoying. Nonetheless, waste not lot not. You know, we aren't made of money and it's just the green thing to do. Okay, let's see. Now the um the drying retarder doesn't quite make the paint. They get buys me a little bit of mixed time, depending on how much I have blended in there, but it still isn't like a full on comparison to working with oil paints. But I just happen to be, because of my experiences, uh, a little bit more comfortable with um, acrylic paints based on just my my experiences in arts leading up till now. I majored in illustration and that was all about fast turnaround, so you worked in, you know, things that you didn't have to worry so much about drying. Already love the values you got on there. Well, thank you. I appreciate that very much. It's a little... Yeah. We're gonna get there. <laughs> we are going to get there. fan on too because um, it's hot in here especially when I have the lights on and I just couldn't deal with my hair today so I threw on a hat and I think it's my fault in the sense that um, I've kind of had this idea in mind that I'm gonna grow up my hair from being super super short and allow it to be like grow out without a lot of trimming to kind of become into like a, a shag. And I think it's just not working for me. Hi, Mary Beth. Hello, hello. Good to see you. Good to have you here. Okay, trying also to make sure that I'm not blocking. Oh, anything while I'm working. Still haven't muted the mic. Yay. It just so happens that I'm I'm like a walking disaster, so it may only be a matter of time. Based on history. Probably gonna need to grab a smaller brush here in a minute. I actually finished my Christmas shopping this week. And this is probably, like, the quickest I've ever gotten it done. And 
I'm very happy to have it done, but I have a crazy story about it that I have to share because it was like one of the weirdest experiences of my existence. Um, in terms of being like in a store, I guess. And I think that, uh, I think y'all might appreciate my weird story. So, there is... <laughs> yeah, her face is a little bit of a mess so far, but, you know, we're all 20 minutes in, it's not so bad. Okay. So, oh, my tea is the perfect temperature right now. There's a store. There's one exists in my town. I think there's variations of it around the place, too. Uh, it's called Treasure Hunt Deals. If you've heard of it, apologize for explaining everything, but... Um, anyway, it's going to tell you. So, the, pr the premise of this store is that it's like a... Uh, uh, sort of a discount store that buys returns from Amazon. So I guess I guess Amazon doesn't really like to deal with returns, restocking, like that's not what they, uh, that's not their thing, that's not what they try to do with their time and their employees and all that training and space and whatever. So they are selling it flats of it wholesale to some resellers, this being one of them. And the concept of the store is that they're closed on Thursdays. That's when they empty all the pallets onto just this huge storefront full of tables. There's piles of crap on all the tables. And they, they stock on Thursdays, so they're closed. On Friday, they open and for each consecutive day of the week, like Friday, the price is going to be, um, let's say, uh, I think it's $8, $8 for anything in the store. Everything's $8. And then the next day, Saturday, it's like six and five and then five and four, three, two. And then once it's two, the next day is Thursday and they restock. But it's a, it's a trip going in there. I think I've been in there once before. Just like randomly, I'm like, what is this place? I need, I'm curious. Just showed up one day. Um, and everything, almost everything there is in a box that doesn't tell you what it is. There's just these boxes where they've ripped off the information for who it went to, like the address and everything, as they should. Um, and then you don't know What's in the box? What's in the box? Dated reference. Sorry. Anyway. Yeah, and then they get mad if you open them at the table. You have to take a box if you want to see what's inside of it. All the way to the back where somebody will open it and then you can see what's inside of it. If it's not what you want, they'll close it, tape it, put it back on the table. It's crazy. It's weird. Anyway. Like, I just had a couple really on the lark things to get. Wasn't really sure about what where i might find what so it's just like hmm, maybe i'll check it that place out like it's just down the street only been there once you never know so i went there and it happened to be the friday the day that they opened with the fresh stock and i got there like an hour after it initially opened and and oh my god <laughs> Uh, how, do, how do, can I explain? So, it's busy, right? It's kind of like you walk in the door and it just is like chaos. It looks like everybody that's been there for since they opened has just like grabbed every larger box. Like they're hoping every, that they're getting, I don't know, an Xbox or something. They hope that that's what they're finding or some electronic things. They can tell what it is. Uh, just 
people everywhere, huge carts filled up to the brims. And what was, besides like the whole like, God, this is a stressful environment because it's busy and chaotic and everybody seems to be nuts. There's also, and I'm telling you, this is the craziest, best, worst thing I've ever experienced in my life. There's music playing. And I don't know if you've ever, I'm wearing hats now all the time. <laughs> Can't decide what to do with your hair. Oh, it's, I just, I, yeah, I have no idea. I'm just sort of ignoring it and hiding it behind hats and bandanas all the time. For now, whatever, we'll see. It's maybe, I'm just always like, maybe as it gets longer, it'll be better. I don't know. But anyway, yes. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, the Halloween movies. Great. Uh, Michael Myers movies except for Halloween 3 is this total departure um like they thought they would just make it this random anthology series at some point with uh different premises and actors so no Michael Myers in Halloween 3 and it's like there's this music ditty thing that happens repeatedly throughout and uh, and this reminded me of that so you know those albums that they you can get Oops, is that still a thing? Kids singing little songs for kids, for young kids. So that they listen to, to learn songs or whatever. I don't have my own kids, so it's just like I'm semi-aware of this stuff from other people. But it was, the music they were playing was kids singing um, some Halloween, not Halloween, Christmas song. I don't remember. I recorded it, but I'm not going to subject you to it because it was, it was hell something along the lines of like maybe jingle bells or something like that right so they're playing the song it's about 45 seconds long and it's looping over and over and over and over and over and over again like it's it was nuts it was played and it was blasting it was so loud it just made you feel like you'd lost your mind while you're in the store and I've never, I've never been someplace where that, like, that was the thing that was, that was like a part of the experience. It was nightmarish, just absolutely nightmarish. <laughs> I think that's the best way that I can possibly describe it. Okay, I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush here to get in, at least for the moment, around some of the smaller sections of colors and then I can work on kind of creating some more depth and smoothing things out. It's still pretty flat. To me that's it was a nightmare. Christmas carols? No. Okay, I have a really hard time with Christmas music. <laughs> Your noses are coming good, good. It's just practice. It's just a lot of practice and doing it over and over again, and then it becomes easier. It's, uh, so don't, don't worry. You will get to where you want to be by simply doing. Um, yeah, I don't, hmm, Christmas music is really hard for me. And I realize that I probably have, I think I've had the same music on here, which I forget about because I don't actually hear it myself. It's just played um so that people watching the stream have something going on when i get absorbed in what i'm doing i forget to speak <laughs> but yeah i don't i have a hard time with christmas music every year i dread it because it's the same it's the same songs every year and oh i've heard them four million times and it's just hard to hear it again and again and again all that many times. I can't, I can't. Small, very small doses. Very, very small doses. And that might make me a curmudgeon, an old lady grouch, but, well, it is what it is. I can't entirely deny that if that's the case.
So just very... Pretty much just blocking in things. And so far, just a lot of looking back and forth. Yeah, preference. And this time, I might have made things a little bit complicated on myself. I made my reference out of a couple different photos I kind of put together, a couple different reference images. I um, kind of digitally combined to be what I want. I got a grouch beanie on, yes. <laughs> I've never known anyone else to have the same reaction. I knew somebody who'd listened to them throughout the year. Oh, it's general music. It's like nails on a chalkboard. I don't know how to do that. I don't I don't know how anyone could do that. It would I would be an insane person. Oh, it stresses me out to think about it. Like I don't put it's not on in the house. Like I don't put it on ever. Probably the only time I hear Christmas music is if I'm out someplace, like maybe where I'm at my mom's. She's uh, she's festive. She likes, she likes the music. And I can handle, you know, just a little sometimes, but oh, you're long. No, no, no. That is not okay. I'm okay with being a grouchy lady. I will accept it. bob too many women my age have them well the thing about a bob though is that it's kind of like a good flattering cut for the majority of people and that's kind of a nice thing in that sense um i'm always just ever since i decided to get rid of like i had this really like full undercut all the way around for a long time that i'd kind of started about years ago and then like a little bit before the pandemic I it felt like I was seeing a lot of people do the same thing so I'm like ah it's time to change it up and I just haven't found my place I haven't found my thing since then so still trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing I haven't even gotten close I keep getting sick of it cutting it off and then deciding, oh, I should oh, let me try to grow it out again. And then I'm just trying to power through the terrible, awkward grow out phase at this point because I don't know what else to do. And on top of that, like my colors kind of faded, but I don't, I, I think I might want to change the color of it. So I'm not like in a hurry to do anything about it <laughs> um so i'm kind of letting it fade so it doesn't look color doesn't look great either so it's just it's just a mess and you know hats hats are nice time of year we can wear a hat i can only wear a hat if i have the fan on because i get hot <laughs> but i do have the fan on now
Ay, looks like a mess. Everybody talk, I hear people talk about the ugly phase of making art. I think my art, my paintings go through multiple ugly phases while I'm working on them. And I'm already in one. <laughs> That's probably more red than I needed there. Got ears. Ears and noses tend to have a lot of pink. Because uh, there's a little bit of translucency there. In our the bits that stick off of our heads <laughs> and around the eyes the skin around the eyes also the skin's a little thinner I listen to Christmas music. I love all types of music. I'm a big fan of music in general, but I think there's something about that it's been mostly the same for like a good two month period out of every year of my life that makes me struggle with it a little bit. You're from a massive musical family. Oh, cool. But Christmas music, it's own special hell, especially when they're all about snow and open fires and, and you live in the South. <laughs> Yeah, awkward phase of the painting and awkward phase of the hair, both. <sighs> I don't know if I'll get there or not. It's been a while. It feels like it's been years. And do as well multiple phases. Some never awaken to their potential. That definitely, yeah, that definitely can be the case sometimes. <laughs> we try to we try to push and pull a little bit, but. Sometimes you just start over. That happens. That absolutely happens. The creative process is sometimes just messy. It's always messy on my on my palettes. That's why I don't worry too much when I get the ugly phase because it's kind of where things live for a while. Because I don't plan it all out in a way that like it's gonna be beautiful on the canvas for a while. <laughs> like just gonna let it be real. We'll work it through somehow. I'll get it there somehow.
I think there would have been a time, though, in my creative life where I would have abandoned a painting at this stage because it didn't look right yet. I, I think that that's probably true for me. I never really uh, developed much of a taste for um, country music. That's something I, I've never just just can't care for it. I do like a lot of random things, but that's just one where I just have never been able to get past. Um, Christmas music might be one of my least favorite things. Although I was in a place earlier this week where I was waiting, I was waiting for an oil change on a car, and I walked to a neighboring business while I was waiting to get a cup of coffee and sit and do a little bit of work while I was waiting. And they were playing um It wasn't just there were it was Christmas music, but it was some station where it was like the new like Christian pop bands, I guess, doing it. And that was that was a little rough for me. <laughs> Frozen. Um I still have, I don't know about that. Is Can everybody else still see me? I think I still have a good connection on my end. How does a canvas like a board like that handle something like water medium? Because you just sewed, is it like normal? Um, so that's... Uh, I wouldn't do watercolor on it because the watercolor doesn't have anything to absorb into, but uh, like a, an acrylic or a gesso, not gesso, gouache, gouache would work fine and acrylic works fine on it because you don't need it to like soak into a surface to, um, to make the, what do you call it, to make, to bind and have the color sit. It can just, it just sits on top and that's how it, it just connects to the gesso. So yeah, for any medium like that, uh, would, but just not watercolor, I think. It's not a stupid question at all. <laughs> no worries. Like, we don't know until we come upon it, right? Until it comes up as like a thing. How else do you know? Like, how would you otherwise?
Um, Christmas horror movies? Yes. Uh, I haven't got on any new ones that I haven't seen yet. We're having some friends come this weekend, and the plan is to watch Krampus, which I really love. Um, that's a fun one. And I think we're going to do one of the Silent Night, Deadly Night sequels. Like, maybe number four? When you get into those, like, really late ones, they have nothing to do with the original couple of movies, and they're just bizarro body horror stuff. Brian Usna is the- directs them, and he's the same guy that did, uh, Society. Um... And worked on, uh, I think he was a producer on, like, From Beyond. So it's, uh, it's good weirdo stuff. And... what's the other one? It's on the list. There is one that I haven't seen that is on the list, so hopefully that'll be fun and a good one. We'll have to see. Um, something new that came out on Shudder. But I really do enjoy... Yeah, there's some good... I think that the original Black Christmas is a great movie. It's a really, like, creepy... It's a legitimately creepy movie. It's from the 70s. It's, a uh... Yeah, just a little bit unexpected, I think, in terms of what it what it does and how it handles the the creep factor. It's uh, not quite a slasher film, but it does a good job, I think. <laughs> Society Jesus Mo Moses, that movie. That movie I stupidly secretly watched it when I was eight. Oh no, because your mom rented it on VHS and I was stuck home from school. <gasps> yeah, I would. <laughs> oh man. I, then the first time I ever saw any of it, like, it wasn't when I was super young, but it was the scene, completely out of context. Um, and there's just no preparing yourself for that. <laughs> Like, it's crazy enough and weird enough to see in context, but, oh, man, yeah. But, definitely uh, a fan of anything that Brian Newsom does. And, oh, I learned about a movie that came out this year, and I'm really excited to see it once it, once it like, is out someplace where I can watch it. Um, it's called... I was going to say acceptable flesh, but it's not quite that. It's something like that. I could look it up. It's on my phone, but I'll maybe later. It's Stuart Gordon is the director who did... Uh... Let's see, can we go back to talking about Christmas carols? <laughs> uh... Ooh, homemade chicken soup. That sounds good. Um... Oh, your son's home. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying for the holidays. If I watch it again, I'd probably be totally chill, but I think we're gonna do... I think if you watch it again, it comes off um, as pretty ridiculous and funny now. Like, it's still shocking because of... well, because of what it is, but... Uh, yeah. You know, this time around, you know it's coming, and all the 80s camp that's in it already. Anyway, um, so Brian Nuzno was a producer on some of the Stuart Gordon movies. Stuart Gordon did Reanimator, From Beyond, Castle Freak, some films like that, which are all great. Uh, worked a lot with Jeffrey Combs. Um, just good stuff. And he, he passed away. And they made this movie kind of, um, in honor of him. Essentially. So I'd really, I really want to see it. It sounds fascinating. It's kind of a right up my alley kind of thing. So I'm waiting for that one to become available. I just learned about it, so Let's see how long that takes. I only just this week watched a couple movies that I've been meaning to see forever and ever that probably everybody has already seen, and that is uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. I finally saw that because it was finally just like free to stream. 
And uh, Midsommar. I just watched Midsommar. Which is kind of uh, another... Air... What's his name? Ari Esther or something like that? The director that did that film and um, Hereditary. So some crazy modern films that... Yeah, that they give you something to think about and talk about after the fact. I do enjoy those. Reanimator is great, isn't it? last week that kind of reminded me a little bit of it but done in a serious way I think I don't remember if when I talked about it was when <laughs> I had accidentally muted myself or not uh, it was um, Earth Rebirth is the name of it and that one was uh, sort of like if you dealt with the subject matter of Reanimator today in a more serious kind of science fiction film like reanimator was comedy it was comedy horror it was silly it was fun but this one was not <laughs> and it took a very serious approach to talking about it and i did it through the lens of of grief and ethical questions and it was i thought it was done pretty well getting into some like some ran random obscure things when I'm talking about some of these films like uh, I don't know how many people have seen Castle Freak but they actually remade it recently I haven't seen the remake because I will admit that I don't get necessarily like disturbed very easily by like movies generally speaking I found that one a little bit upsetting. I didn't love it. <laughs> so I'm not haven't been in a big hurry to see the uh, remake. Not so much, I will admit. certain things in that I don't care for in horror movies and I saw the movie X and I didn't care for that either even though it got some pretty it got a lot of rather good reviews I thought it for whatever it was going trying to be it felt mostly just uh, kind of exploitive to me didn't care for that one a whole lot
Um, wait, I'm getting behind on conversation. The boy and the heron. Oh, yeah. I, I'm aware of that being out now. Can't believe that saw is still going. Oh my god, I know. I was sure spirit spiral was the finish, but I just exhausted. I felt like I like I saw three, four, five, etc. was enough. Oh my god, I think so. New unique stuff. Absolutely. You might have to. I mean, there is. I enjoy. There is good stuff out there. There legitimately is. It exists. Um. Sometimes it feels like it's hard to find. You gotta dig through a lot of garbage to find it, but there are some good movie filmmakers out there still doing interesting things. try to talk about if I come across something that's good and or interest or at least interesting I'll bring it up I mean having seen just midsummer this week that's not new but it was definitely interesting and uh, it works better when you think when you watch it through the lens of that it's uh a metaphor for for like a long breakup it's more successful as that than as the literal story that makes a lot of sense but it's still a, it's still quite a ride it still has good shocking bits for sure good acting and honestly the most shocking thing to me like on an emotional level was like the first in the first 10 minutes of the movie, like the pre-credit pre, pre bit. That, which wasn't gore or anything to do with that exactly. It was just the horrible tragedy of what happens to, um, I don't, I mean, it's been a while. I probably don't need to worry about spoilers, but I think that movie It's worth watching, I'd say. Yeah, I don't care if I never see another Saw movie again in my life. I wish I hadn't seen even as many as I did. I'm just trash, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Graphic novel is psychological thriller mystery, but strangely enough, I don't think I want to make it horror. That's okay. Maybe it will be horror anyway if I push it hard enough. Well, there's... you don't have to push it in a direction necessarily. You can just let it be what the story wants to be. And sometimes there's, you know, there's some crossover in these things. Some thrillers have horrific elements to them. And where, like, there's plenty of movies that kind of are borderline one thing or the other. I mean, just, just the other day, like, my partner was like, I'm kind of tired of that <laughs> you, you always prefer the horror movies, but let's watch something different. And, uh, looking for a, uh, uh, just like an action film and he put on uh extractor i think it was called extraction extractor extraction which was a really well done action movie very entertaining but some of the violence in that is almost just as shocking as anything that 
you see in almost any in most horror movies you know so there's things that I maybe it, it's a little bit of context that creates why it's one way or not or the other or not probably but yeah a lot Things that are not horror can be horrific. Things that are horror can be funny and thoughtful and yeah, it's uh, nothing has to be super one way or the other. I don't like obvious horror. Agreed. I want to have to work things out as an audience. I, that's what I like too. I like to, I mean, dumb and blunt can be fun sometimes if it's done well enough, but I agree with you. That's I like the ones that have the psychological element to it, that are that are talking about something, that have something to say. I've been holding my tea for like ever, not drinking it. Oh yes, Mary Beth, good question about how your graphic novel is going. Slowly but surely, chipping away at it. For the first time in your whole life, I drew your main- Oh, you drew your main character! That's awesome! And she looks as she looked. Currently working on her portrait. I'm very proud. Excellent! That's awesome! Good work! That's- that's awesome. <laughs> Things start to happen. Just keep going and suddenly... All of a sudden you got something on your hands. I love it. I love the creative process that way. There's so many possibilities and... directions that things can go. Looks got a little goofy here. Lost my sketch and I got a little goofy, but I'll we'll fix that. I also probably should not be ignoring the arm. I'm just gonna adjust how much I can see of my reference photo here real quick. Alright. along all in all yeah maybe
back to a bigger brush. Here we go. My palette is just <laughs> becoming kind of a big mess, but it is what it is. And now you can probably really see how it's getting, uh, you can see how the light's hitting it. So it's like, uh, becoming really rippled. What are you doing? I admit when I did her portrait in pencil, I sat back and cried. Oh, <laughs> just very getting that out on paper has got to be incredible. I always dreamed of that day and I've been studying all year and I made it. Didn't think I would. And here you are. Heck yeah. <laughs> One thing I love about pastels, drawing with paint, no need for water, palette, just go. Yeah, that is true. Especially when I don't have a whole lot of space to work with. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, dry media like that, pencils, things along those lines, definitely work if you have issues with space and... I mean, that's one of the reasons that for a long time I had worked digitally was that I just didn't have to worry about... Um, yeah, the setup and... And even like the cleanup and having maintaining brushes and <laughs> buying paints and stuff, it just sort of, uh, I just got out of all of that part of things for a while. And even now, I mean, I have nothing to complain about. I have a decent amount of space in here, but it, it still, things are still a, uh, a struggle sometimes to figure out how to work with what I have. Especially cause I'm, I mean, I'm my own worst enemy. I try to work with like every medium there is. I don't want to be put in a box on anything. I don't want to do it all. So I'm always falling all over myself with all of it. Oh well, that is what it is. Yeah, whatever, whatever works for you, given your space, your preferences, that's what you go with. gets you creating and making things, especially things that you love. <laughs> that looks kind of weird for now. Oh, it's good to see you, Mary Beth. <laughs> if you make it back before then, we'll say hi again. Um, okay. Keep going and adding some... Mm 
marks on the arm, start building the arm and the hand a little bit because I kind of was ignoring them. And for shame to myself. I really do keep meaning to change up the music on here. I think because I don't hear it doesn't bother me too much, so I kind of just ignore it, um, which eh, it's on my to-do list. It is. It's on my to-do list, so I hope it's not making everybody crazy because it's been the same for a while. It's going to become like how I feel about Christmas music for you guys, <laughs> and I don't want that to happen. So try to change it up a bit here. brush. Somehow I've some gotten this far only using two brushes yet tonight. So that's not so bad, I guess. I don't know. Not that it matters. I think I need to get one of those uh, cup warmer uh, pads, coasters. It's like USB ones. So I tend to put down my cup, whether it's coffee during the daytime or in the evening and put it down and kind of forget about it <laughs> and then it's cold when I'm trying to drink it. It's not cold but it's sort of like lukewarm at the moment. Coloring on the inside of her arm. Oh thank you. It's slapping it together a little bit but we're just keep keep building it. It's sort of just giving myself a starting point to work off of. Oh, let's go really crazy. I am incorporating a little subtle uh, storytelling into this one. I mean, I guess I always kind of do to some extent, but, or usually. But this is going to have some reference to a bit of a fairy tale. That I have referenced before in my work quite some years ago, but it's kind of a recurring thing that I go back to and think about, so I'm gonna back here. Not a Santa hat. If anybody was thinking that that's what's happening, nope. Nope, nope. Definitely not that. didn't occur to me that it would look like that until I just sort of looked at the screen after I started painting it on. It's like, oh no. 
is not what we're doing. There he is. Some dried paint on my brush. I have the audio muted, by the way. We're listening to music. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Not going for Santa or anything. Definitely not. Try to build that in a direction where it looks a little bit, not so much like that, but once I get rid of the white, that will help, I think. So we're just going to keep painting, painting it in here. I my paint on my palette anywhere that I hadn't mixed in that uh, slow dry medium is starting to get dry and I'm picking up little bits of the dried paint and that's kind of gross. Trying to watch for that. One thing that will make it make sense is once I get some of the hair in there. It's actually a beanie. <laughs> once I actually put her hair in there, it will make more sense because right now it's sitting on top of the hair, but the hair isn't there. I think one of the reasons I really love your style is because of the way you blend your colors. Since I jumped into pastels, it's the vibrancy and the mixing of colors that get me, yeah. Yeah, and I do a lot of mixing on on the on the the canvas also which is probably something that which is basically what probably what you're doing with your pastels too so it makes a lot of sense okay and i had a thought about i was going to do the hair so we're going to just start with the gray just to lay down something See, now I'm holding my paint water <laughs> without even realizing I was doing it, which is dangerous because I'll probably try to take a sip of it thinking it's my tea. So yeah, the struggle is real when it comes to the whole paint water thing. <laughs> Whatever, it's fine. That part's still getting painted over yet.
Put the water down, Linnell. Asking for trouble. Am I putting some of this stuff down before, like, any single part is done? Is helpful because I can keep track of how the tones affect each other against each other. I think I'd like to go. I'm gonna lean a little like light blue ultimately with the hair. Probably. But I'm gonna lay in this color just so I can see how or where the dark is going, how that's working. Or it's touching anything else. So I can make adjustments as I go. second so I can get down to the bottom. I'm here. Try not to make too much of a mess of my easel. surprised with how much is getting done already here. I mean, there's still a really long way to go, but even in terms of just laying down some base layers to work on top of and mixing directly on the canvas. Yep. I'm sort of in love with the color mixing and the, the blend in her arm. Oh, thank you. Still more work to do on that as well. Happening there. Yeah, there's a few weird things happening that I need to make adjustments. I keep picking my up. Why? <laughs> like to live chaotic and risky, I guess.
Okay. I mean, it'll get there. <laughs> oh, guess what I did this week? Rigged up a DIY projector so I could get my character up on an A2 to print. Nice! Heck yeah! I have one of those really cheapo uh, projectors that they sell, like, for 50, 60 bucks on Amazon that they say, oh yeah, you can use these to like project movies in your backyard. It would never, let me tell you, it would never work for any of that. But, but it works for me to do the, uh, yeah, project my paintings in a room that's dark enough, well enough to be able to transcribe them over. So that's, that's exactly what I got it for. Looks well enough for that. You know, I come up with all kinds of weird... It's amazing what you'll come up with to make things work and get something done. <laughs> but yeah, if you figure out a good way to do that, heck yeah. It's great to realize that you don't need much of a sketch to start with before you go into the painting. You just need the guideline. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, for everybody, it depends on their style of working. Some people do want something really specific. I just sort of like block out my, my, uh, the basic shape and then the highlights and shadow areas a little bit just to give myself a guideline to work off of to get started with. It is then it's just a lot of looking back at my reference and going back and forth on yeah it's an interesting th thing to figure out what works for you and sometimes it's not what like is a recommended or largely taught thing but who cares do it the way that it that it functions best. Do it the way that you get what you want out of it. And that is what matters. Definitely gonna need to go back into my hand with a much smaller brush and really try to get that clearer, more accurate, but getting things down for now.
never learn better than to just shove my finger right into it. That's just the fact of the matter. Mine is a sandwich bag in a shoebox with my phone torch lighting from behind. Oh, smart. Do it the way you get what Yes. <laughs> That's the truth. Oh, hello, Mary Beth. Welcome back. Yeah, I mean, you always find... Sometimes just necessity is the mother of invention, right? Like, you don't need to buy a uh, projector if you can be clever with materials. Like, that's a brilliant use of materials. smaller brush because I had something in mind, but what was it? <laughs> I probably can start uh, getting into some more of the details around the eyes a little bit, because I think I feel pretty good about where that is anyway. I don't know. We'll see. It's always like, uh, sometimes it's, I gotta come back the next day to really look at it and see what I've accomplished and see how it's working is often the way it goes. Tell Mary Beth to drive safe and, and keep her beers in the car. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> no beers for you, huh? Smaller brush for hair. Yeah, I mean, not everything. Worked on the hair before. Um, yeah, there's always... It's that short attention span thing. It's like there's something specific I was going to do, and then by the time I grab the right brush for it, it's left the brain but it doesn't matter it's all gonna come around back and get done 
as it goes. Okay, we're I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm going back and forth in my head, but I know I'll get it there. Just trusting. That I sort of maybe know a little bit of what I'm doing, maybe not entirely, but enough to get into trouble. Enough to have some fun with it. a color and then it's like oh wait what was I fixing that for? Uh, I guess I had just enough to get myself into trouble. So this cutting board is um, almost 16 by 20. It's like a quarter inch shy of that on each side. But it's actually a pretty good size for working, surprisingly. This never ever fails. I'm getting to that point where my paints are drying up and getting tacky. And that is, even with that medium on my palette, that just comes. Downside of acrylic painting, or good side, I guess, if you look, depending on your point of view. And maybe the moment in time.
<laughs> Eyes look kind of like crazy at the moment. <laughs> Beer church is over. I love it. <laughs> It's just that I look uh, kind of my makeup. I think maybe get a little too big. It makes that I look a little too big, but these little tweaks are helping. I'm getting more into like the fussing and tweaking of things that I I really meant to yet. That's right. I'm I'm surprised that I got this much done on the canvas today. I feel pretty good about that. This one's nice one. Things happen a little. 
easier or faster than they could. <laughs> That's what I thought. This whole area got is very, very messy. I feel like the arm's flat, but those are things that I'll work, continue to work on. Hands nowhere near driven done. <laughs> but there's some good things happening here. Uh, I want to work a little bit on, I kind of have this little neck tattoo on here for her. So I'm going to add a little bit more on there yet. Well, my paint is still at least somewhat living up still for me. Hasn't gotten completely dried up and tacky yet, <clears throat> but we are on the verge. I'm just going to block it in a little bit because I don't have exactly the color set to go yet. I'm working with a bit of a, a limited palette so far. I just have still yellow ochre, white, with a cried on something red. <laughs> I can never say the word. Quinacridone, I think that's how you say it. Quinacridone rose as my red, and then Payne's gray. So those are the colors that I've been working with today. At some point I'll get, get into that when I feel good about the kind of flesh of it and um, add a lot more clarity and detail of what it's supposed to be and should look. Okay, let's see. What the heck? Let's throw some cobalt blue action on here while I still have some energy for going. Which is shocking because I've been half asleep all day, it felt like. But you take what you can get when you get it. this part up a little bit as I go. I'm kind of
ultimately try to get the hair to look much less black. And we'll take it more in a direction of a very like silvery light blue. Just kind of play with the tones of things a little bit. See how light I can go and make it make sense next to the other elements. Like the arm, of course, it's very flat and round, so when I work back into that, adjust my edges and such and make any changes and corrections as I need to. When I continue working on this, um, obviously not doing, gonna be able to get everything that I want done today. <laughs> We're just getting started. Just kind of thinking out loud and working through in my head how I'm going, how I'm attacking things, what my intentions are. <laughs> 34 degrees celsius there today that's hot <laughs> oh man we're just starting to get into the 30 fahrenheit's here which is we're just above freezing And I have to admit, I kind of am happy about it. I'm just too hot all the time. <laughs> like, it, it's freezing outside, and I'm, you know, in here wearing a tank top, because... And the fan's on. I mean, also, lights, the camera lights and stuff that I have on get... It gets hot in here, so... Trying to manage all those things. Alright, I just put that color out to do something. Not anticipating random bits of paint coming up. I haven't painted that for a while. That's weird. Eh, whatever.
Okay, I need a bigger brush now. First, first, first. Let me tone this part back a little bit. It's too bright. Okay. Anyway, what I was saying I was going to do. All right, let me do what I haven't done for a while and step back. Just so flat here. All right, you can tell I'm thinking because I'm not talking. It's always dangerous, dangerous time. Is something going wrong? Yeah, humidity, 94 degrees Fahrenheit. Yep, that's a hot one. <laughs> Blue screen. <laughs> Uh, I hope not. Um, that's funny. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny that how different it is. It's not funny. It's just nature. But as we're getting colder, 
And we gotta start ramping up for those uncomfortably warm days there. I've just come, I have come to love the winter because I guess I think the thing that made me always hate the winter was just the the need to be out and function to drive, like to actually have to be on the roads when it really isn't safe because, you know, you have a job that requires it. Because, you know, designing flyers for preschool is saving lives. And I should definitely be risking my life to be there to make sure that doesn't get interrupted. <laughs> eh. Not having to be out on the roads when it's very dangerous can make you appreciate things a lot more. I do actually really like how quiet it can be. Like when a new snow comes down, it's just very, everything's very like pretty for that moment of time before everything gets disgusting and dirty. Um, but there's this quiet that comes with a fresh snow too. That insulating effect that it has. And that's something that you can actually take a minute to appreciate it. If you don't just have to go out, dig your car out from being buried under snow and get on the road and hope for the best. Ah, the Midwest. Just thinking about Things that I that used to do for work, especially before I lived where I do now, like being out well out by where Mary Beth is, um, I can remember getting out and driving to a town over to go to work when there was six inches of snow and the roads were not plowed yet. And I look back on that and I'm just like. What is, what was wrong with you? <laughs> Why did you ever just say that, that, like, now? No. Roads aren't cleaned, driveways not plowed, I'm not going anywhere. Sorry, folks. Unless there's an emergency. I hate to break it to you, but almost any job related to design is not an emergency. I mean, I say that, but I also accept the reality of, you know, you gotta work a job, you gotta work, you gotta do it too, and that's a shitty thing. Sometimes, sometimes, depending on the situation. Trying to get there. Oh, you refreshed. Oh, good. Yeah, having to dry in the snow and ice is, is brutal. Um, taking the train in certainly makes things a lot easier. <laughs> yeah.
wait, your, okay, your sister sent you a video. She bought her adult son's chicken, a tiny pair of macho arms, and it looks hilarious. Okay, for some reason, my eyes skipped ahead to just, I saw, okay, I refreshed. I skipped the next sentence and it went straight to, she bought her adult son's a chicken. Oh, what? What's happening? And that was an amazing little moment in my brain. Two tiny arms giving two thumbs up. That's, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, the roads out here, the roads are really, can be really terrible with the blow, yeah, the blowing is awful. I did have one moment a couple years ago where I had uh, a painting in an art show in Evanston, which is um, not a super far drive. It's like I'm in the northwest suburbs and that's in the north suburbs. But it was a day that there was snow coming down. Was this last year or two years ago? It all blends together, I don't know. Um, and that it was the day you had to drop it off. It was only the one day. So that was a day that I ventured out and uh, they did not clear the roads even here for quite a while. Um, they, it's like, I think they were waiting for is it a weekend today, maybe? Maybe that was... No, I don't know. I don't remember. But it's like they were waiting for the snow to be done before they wanted to get the plows out on the road. For the That was for county roads. Cook County, Chicago. You may have heard of it. It's uh, interesting. Um, yeah, so that was another situation. There wasn't a ton of snow. I think it was like three inches but on unplowed roads where cars are going and you're just getting a lot of uh slush and ice it was uh more excitement than i was hoping to experience on that drive but that's the, probably the worst experience i've had since since not having to commute for a day job um currently Really, really don't miss that. I remember when my sister was a teenager, like uh, high school, and we were looking at, she was looking at colleges. Uh, and there was one in Minnesota. Minnesota? No, North Dakota. So this is right up, uh, kind of if you, very north, the very, very north of the middle part of the United States, up next to Canada. And that school, because of the extreme winters, had uh, underground tunnels to get to from one building to another. And that always seemed pretty intense. She didn't end up going there, but... There's some... Serious weather days we're preparing for with that. I think it's bad here. <laughs> it's all relative, I suppose. I'm always in awe of the people who like run outside that go running even on the super snowy, cold, freezing, awful days. Slushy grossness. Um, that's dedication. That is serious dedication. And it will never be me. <laughs> Just... Just, nope. 
Well, I am thinking that I might kind of This might be a really a good place to stop. I'm a little over two hours in. My palette is jacked, like the paint, because <laughs> it's acrylic paint after about the two hour mark. It's just all tacky and weird. Um, and this is probably a really good point just for me mentally to walk away from this painting and like get a, be able to come back to it with some fresh eyes. As I still make a mess on it. Um, yeah. There's a lot of work left to do <laughs> on her, but it's a really... I feel very good about it as a start on a painting that literally just started today, so feel good about that at least. And we'll pick this up on... Well, Thursday morning, U.S. Central Time, 10 o'clock, I will be here, and we will continue with this mess, see where we can go, see where it takes us, as I continue to paint, even though I said I was going to stop, because, ah, I am an agent of chaos in my own life. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Yes, we're going to stop here, I think. So, uh, where are we? Oh, Mary Beth, goodbye if I missed you. Um, have a great night. And yeah, we'll pick this up Thursday morning. So thank you for anybody who who's watched, everybody who stopped by. Um, thank you guys so much. I love you all. <laughs> And keep me showing up here. Um, I'm done. I'm done. For real. Okay. Hey. All right. Yes. Thursday. I hope to see you and uh, have a really great week and uh, night and everything. Hope all your creative projects are awesome. And I hope to see you soon. All right. <laughs> Awkward goodbyes. All right. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>